Ten points for this. Who in September 2008 was described as a man who might just take us somewhere we've never been before? Modley Ward. Barack Obama? No, I'm afraid you lose five pints. Uh, five points. <laughs> and five pints, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> who might just take us somewhere we've never been before? It'll be a good ride. He resigned his position in January 2009 following an unsuccessful tour to India. Buzz one of you, please. St. Hughes Glenton. Kevin Peterson. Correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on 19th century philosophers. Described by Bertrand Russell as the single most difficult philosopher to understand, whose works include the 1807 Phenomenology of Spirit and the 1831 Science of Logic? Hegel. Correct. Written partly in reaction to Hegel and in a literary rather than academic style, which existentialist philosopher wrote The Sickness Unto Death Either or and fear and trembling. Uh, Kierkegaard. Uh, Correct. The conduct of life, self reliance, and nature are among the works by which American transcendentalist. Uh, we don't know. It's Emerson. Another starter question. What philosophical theory was attacked by Karl Popper, who defined it as an approach to the social sciences which assumes that historical predictions is their principal aim? And which. Maudlin Harris. Is it paradigmatic? No, I'm afraid you lose five points. And assumes that historical prediction is their principal aim, and which assumes that this aim is attainable by discovering the rhythms, the patterns, the laws, or the trends. One of you, Buzz, please, St. Hughes. I'm not giving you any longer. St. Hughes Freeborn. Um, Marxism? No, it's historicism. Another starter question. A river beside the springs of which an unpraised and mostly unloved maid dwelt, according to Wordsworth, and a cottage where he himself lived were both named after which bird? St. Hughes Economides. Raven. No, anyone want to bust Maudlin? Maudlin Ward. Finch. No, it's the Dove. Lived in Dove Cottage. Ten points for this. Named after an area of a European microstate, what stochastic technique examines problems by generating suitable random numbers and observing that fraction of the numbers that conform to some property or properties? St. Hughes Glenton. Monaco. No, any want to buzz from Maudlin? Maudlin Ward. Vatican. No, it's the Monte Carlo method. Ten points for this. Which first name, although in every case not used professionally, was given at birth to the actors David Niven and Stuart Granger, the Beatle Paul McCartney, and the politicians Ramsay MacDonald, Harold Wilson, and Gordon Brown? Uh, St. Hughes Brown. Yes, 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 I give up. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Right, your bonuses are on measuring instruments. A keratometer measures the radius of curvature of the cornea and is therefore used for assessing the extent of which defect of vision? Um, glaucoma? Uh, glaucoma. No, it's astigmatism. From the Greek fort to slope, what name is given to a handheld surveying instrument used for ascertaining the angle of ele or elevation of slopes? Gradiometer. Gradiometer. Uh, no, it's a clinometer or inclinometer. And finally, a meteorologist would use a eudometer to measure what? Um, rainfall. Rainfall? Yes, of course. <laughs> what have you got a classicist on the team for if you don't know things like that? Right, we're going to take a music round now. You're going to hear a piece of classical music. Ten points, please identify the composer. St. Hughes Freeborn. Human. Anyway, you can hear a bit more, Maudlin. Maudlin Hobbs? Schubert. Schubert is right, yes. <laughs> that was uh, famously from the Trout Quintet. You're going to hear three more 19th century compositions by Austrian composers. In each case, I simply want you to identify the composer. Strauss? No, that's Mahler, part of his Symphony No. 1. Secondly... Mm. 
Strauss? No, that's Bruckner. <laughs> and finally... Strauss. <laughs> Which one? Richard. No, it's Johann Strauss the second. Right, ten points for this. The jewellers Tiffany & Co, the Kingdom of Prussia, the French artist Yves Klein and the Cornflower all give their names to shades of which color? Maudlin Harris. Blue. Blue is right, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, Maudlin, are on the stage works of Anton Chekhov. In each case, identify the play from the opening stage directions. Firstly, the Prozorov's house, a drawing room with columns beyond which a ballroom can be seen. Midday, outside the sun is shining cheerfully, a table in the ballroom is being laid for lunch. The seagull? No, it's the three sisters. The garden, part of the house and terrace can be seen, a table laid for tea stands on a path under an old poplar, benches and chairs, there's a guitar on one of the benches. The cherry orchard? Now that's Uncle Vanya, and finally, the park on Sorin's estate. A wide path leading away from the audience to a lake in the background is blocked by a rough stage put up for an amateur dramatic performance. The seagull. That is the seagull, yes. Another starter question. In the USA, the Federal National Mortgage Association and the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation are commonly known... St. Hughes Economides. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Yes. Right, listen carefully, St. Hughes. Your bonuses are on two-letter codes of UK postcode areas and the words they spell. For example, Oxford and Enfield postcode areas, O-X and E-N, mm -hmm. together they spell the word oxen. So I want, first of all, the two-letter codes of a cathedral city on the River D, and of the county town of Suffolk. They spell the name of what common foodstuff? Uh, Chip? Yes, it is Chester and Ipswich. The two letter codes of the county town of Somerset and of the Essex town that claims to be the oldest in England spell the name of what North American fast food item? Um, I think that's Bath and then. I don't know what the other one is. Um... Uh, we don't know. It's Taunton and Colchester, Taco. Mm -hmm. The two letter codes of a London borough close to the North Downs and a university city in North East Scotland spell what edible crustacean? Uh, crab. Crab, Croydon and Aberdeen is right. Ten points for this starter question. The sites of the seven wonders of the ancient world are spread over four present-day countries. For ten points, name three of them. St. Hughes Economides. Turkey, Greece and Egypt. Yes, the other one's Iraq. Well done. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on conditions of the human foot. For each of the following, I, I want the common name given to the condition. Firstly, a structural deformity and bony enlargement of the metatarsal phalangeal joint due to deviation of the bones of the big toe. Uh. <laughs> uh, we don't know. It's a bunion. Secondly, metabolic arthritis caused by deposits, deposits of crystals of uric acid and its salts in joints, especially affecting the big toe, characterized by sudden excruciating pain. Gout. Correct. And finally, a dermatophyte fungal infection of the skin between the toes. Athlete's foot. Yes. Ten points for this. Taken from the name of a science fiction writer who died in 2008 and who'd earlier popularized the concept, what term is used for a geostationary orbit such as that of many communication satellites? Maudlin Ward. Clark. It's a Clark orbit. That's right, yes. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on southeastern Europe during the two world wars. In each case, the answer is a current EU member state. Which country firstly declared war on Austria-Hungary in August 1916? It joined the Axis in November 1941. Nominate Hobbes. Bulgaria. No, it's Romania. Which country entered the war on the side of the Central Powers in October 1915 and took part in the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia in April 
Let's have an answer, Bulgaria? please. Bulgaria? That was Bulgaria, yes. Which country formally joined the Allies in June 1917? It was attacked by Italy in October 1940 and by Germany in April 1941. Come on. Czechoslovakia? No, it was Greece. 